Hi, I'm Dawn Stenzlin Menti. My first guest today is an up and coming television talk show host and superstar whose new show is premiering right here on WMCN TV 44. Her name is Chelsea Cross, and at just 22 years old, she is a powerhouse. At 16, she wrote her very first book and started her own national radio show. She shot to fame on the national talk show circuit. Is she adorable or what? As the voice of her generation, speaking on sex, relationships, trends, and issues affecting all millennials. Let's bring in Chelsea Cross. A big hello. Hi. It's so good to be here together. And I feel like I know you because I've seen you so much uh, Me too. On, on so many <laughs> different shows. But first of all, what is the millennial generation? You know, that's such a great question. And it's not like I've never heard that question before. But the millennial generation is basically a term bracketing the people who were born in the late 70s to the early 90s. So anyone who's like 17 to 29 right now. OK. That is the millennials. You know, I know you've traveled the world. I, I love your story that you um, that you, st you you got into this because you told me that you made your first documentary at 14 with your brother, yeah. who was 11 at the time, and it was a, a hurricane or tropical storm coming in, and then you were hooked. I thought that I was going to be a veterinarian from the time you know when I was very little. I grew up riding horses, and I grew up in in farm country in South Florida, so I didn't know anything but animals and being outdoors. And it's a big difference living in New York City right now, <laughs> concrete jungle versus horse country. But I wanted to be the real life. Dr. Doolittle, and I was convinced that animals really knew what I was saying. And then when Hurricane Francis really demolished my community in 2007, 2007, I picked up a camera and I said, this is, this feels right. And when I went into high school, I, I submitted myself for television production and really that was it. And I you was were like, off. this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And by the way, you're going to love it because we have uh, some friends from Paws here with adoptable pets. So, yeah. so as an animal lover, you're going to, but I want to talk about something that's been in the headlines that I know that you, you feel and we all feel um, so much emotion about, and that is the Steubenville, Ohio rape case. Uh, that's been going on. Um, I, I remember when the story broke, I was actually home in South Florida and I was in my car driving and I heard the story about the Steubenville rape case and how the boys were potentially not going to be charged because they were high school superstars and you know for the football team mm -hmm. and immediately my blood started to boil and I was just I, I, I was I was appalled and I said this can't possibly be the end result. And so I was very happy when the verdict came out that they were going to be charged as guilty. Well, and what was interesting mm -hmm. was that the, there were hundreds of videos, and we, we uh, have pictures of them um, really demeaning this girl. It's not that she she was raped, uh, that that also they hogtied her and uh, carried her like livestock and took those horrible pictures that were plastered all over the internet. Mm -hmm. And so it was interesting that social media then pushed for justice for Jane Doe, this rape victim. You know, it's so interesting because a lot of us have a love-hate relationship with social media. Mm -hmm. You love social media because it connects you with people all over the world and it's the best networking tool and it got me to where I am in my career thus far. But social media can also be, you know, a horrible tool to victimize someone and publicly display them like an animal. I mean, literally they were treating this girl treating this girl like she was an animal. But it's so interesting how this case revolutionized how social media could have an influence in a grand jury to get justice for being, you know, an a, vict a victim. And I think it's going to set the record straight for pe for people hopefully thinking to themselves, you know, what should I post and what should I not post from here on out and also knowing that social media could really bite you in the butt. Because yeah. what you post is going to, you know, circle back around and either make or break you. And for instance, these two boys, because of social media, are now facing jail time. Yeah, which I mean, you know, you're glad for the for the justice. We want to. I know that uh, teen sex issues are one of your many platforms. Yeah. <laughs> um, but even in this case, I mean, you look at the images of teen women and college age women. Uh, that women are sex objects and all of that. I mean, is that something that you you share with people and you say, this is a problem? Well, you know, it's so funny because I, I because of social media, everyone is able to share with me what they want to hear on the radio show and now on the TV show, which I love. I love, you know, speaking about what people want to hear, which is so at the forefront of my TV show as well. So when the hookup culture came out in the New York Times, it was a, an article titled The Hookup Culture. 
I, my phone didn't stop for about 48 hours. You have to talk about the hookup culture. What is the hookup culture? Does this mean that you know uh, courtship is no longer for the rest of our lives? And that goes along with the lines with our women's sex objects today, uh, being that men think that we they can just send us a text, the girl comes over, they do whatever, and then they the girl up. leaves. Yeah. yeah, and you know, unprotected. Un <laughs> unprotected. I mean, unfortunately, one in four people have an STD today especially teenagers. 40% of people who are diagnosed with HIV are teenagers. I mean, these numbers are so, so high. And this and is something that young people just aren't talking and, about. Right, and you might ask you. yourself why. <laughs> you might ask yourself why, and you know, being that I'm 22 years old, why do I feel the need to talk about these things? Is because I want to empower my generation with the information that isn't accessible. You know, I'm sick of, of all these people, you know, typing their questions into the internet, looking for the answer when they don't have peers or experts to go to instead and getting the right information. And what's your problem right now with the teen uh, sex education programs? You know, what I think is just lacking, it, and this is, you know, a lot of people feel the same way with surveys and statistics, and the CDC came out with this survey report, which I, we, uh, I know all of these st statistics, is that people, especially within high schools where the, you know, the programs are being implemented to the students, it's about abstinence programs. And the reality is, is that preaching abstinence today is just not the reality. You know, we are not, we are in 2013. So to be, you know, we need to be realistic about the do's and don'ts that teenagers are going to follow. And just mm -hmm. preaching abstinence to these children, it's going to go through one ear and out the other. So we need to talk about safe sex tips and condoms and prevention aside from just being abstinent. And we need to talk about STDs and condom use and birth control because that's what's happening in today's world. And that's not talked about in the programs in high school. School. And I can see where schools and uh, you know and teachers don't feel comfortable with this topic. But is this something that you're 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 opening this conversation, but you want Absolutely. parents to talk about? Absolutely. I mean, I talk to parents just as much as I talk to my peers. And little did I know when I started my radio show at 16 years old, just as much parents and grandparents were going to be tuning in because they wanted to they understand. They want to know what's going on. <laughs> they want to understand the millennial mindset. They want to understand what their children are going through. And sometimes it's hard to sit down and have a conversation with your mom or have a conversation with your child but you know a lot of the parents they think that they're it, they're they think that their children haven't had sex yet and by the time your child is 16 50 percent of the t time they've already had sex so don't wait till it's too late and then something bad could have you know possibly happened right. start young have open conversation with your children communication is everything not only amongst your family but within your relationship yeah, absolutely. if you can't communicate then it's it, something's it's wrong. Big trouble. Okay, so let's talk about your show. Tell me about <laughs> your show and what you have planned. I had, uh, you know what, I'm pinching myself every morning Aww. because when I was 16 years old and I started my radio show, I, I knew that television was my dream because I wanted to just make everything more powerful. But radio was this amazing platform that got me here today. So my show is really a fresh take on talk. You know, I'm sick of generations prior talking about my generation. I absolutely adore Katie Couric and Oprah Winfrey and the view but you know it's time for the Millennials to share their perspective or their opinion or their thoughts so my show is going to be you know all about my generation whether we're talking bullying sex orgasms I mean you name it we're talking about it education finance money things that we really need to talk about today and things that you know information that we're yearning to find whether it's on the internet or asking your mom or dad you know we're talking about it on my show in a fun and entertaining way Okay, so I want everybody to please mark your calendar. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Thank you. Your, your show begins, the, the premiere show, Thursday, April the 18th, 7.30 p.m. We'll all be watching together. When we come back, adorable orphan cats and dogs. Chelsea, you're gonna love this, who need loving homes. Oh, could you be their next mommy or daddy?